Diabolical Tales. For your increased enjoyment, this special episode of The Diabolical Tales Radio Hour will be presented without commercials. However, because our programming is reliant on our sponsors, tonight's episode will feature product placement by Amalgamated Technologies. Our story begins in remote southern Tibet, in the Himalayan mountains on August 6, 1939. A small group of men are making their way through the lower hills. These men are members of the Ananer, the Nazi Ancestral Heritage Society, in Tibet on an official expedition ordered by Heinrich Himmler. They are led by a German zoologist and SS officer named Dr. Ernst Schaefer. For over 14 months, we have been scouring the foothills of the Himalayas, and we have found nothing! Nothing to prove the existence of Agatha. Nothing to prove a tunnel to the underworld exists! But it is here, Dr. Schaefer. Mm. All my life I have waited for this expedition. Nothing has come of it! The tunnel to Agatha must be here! The legends claim it must be so! Atong! Yeah? Helmet here. Due to British and French aggression, the Fuhrer has moved the plan to September 1st. You are to return to base camp and proceed back to Germany. Success! Heil Hitler! I am sorry, Dr. Schaefer. We must leave. The great plan is more important than this right now. No! No! This is more important! If we could make contact with our superior brothers in the underworld and persuade them to join us, we could conquer all without the great plan. Of course, Dr. Schaefer. Bah. If I could only find Agatha. Wait. What is that? Oh my, Fiora! Dr. Helmet, come, look! What is it, Dr. Schaefer? You see? On the side of that mountain? Uh, what is it that you see? Here, use my monocular. Do, do you see that? That man, that man with the cape. I see no man, Dr. Schaefer. What? Let me see. He's not there. I saw a man with a cape watching us from that cave. We must investigate. Yeah, but unfortunately, we have been ordered back to Berlin. Home, Dr. Schaefer. Three hours walk back to camp. We must return to this place after we have won the war. And finally, locate the tunnel to Agatha. But who do you think was watching us? Some racial degenerates? Yeah, maybe a bunch of little Chinaman. <laughs> I am so scared of little Chinese <laughs> with their little toy yeah, guns. Yeah, mm. we vanquished them all in the great plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go to base camp and get some snaps. Uh, good idea. Okay, yeah. Dr. Schaefer and his Nazis were right about only one thing. They were being watched by a mysterious man dressed in a flowing black cape standing on the side of a mountain. This uncanny man turned and disappeared into a dark cave. Hey, wait a minute. What's the f-stop? It's gonna be a big flash. If you don't set it right, it's gonna burn the film and jam the gate, you know? Yeah, but what's the f-stop? I don't know. I thought you said you filmed one of these before. A-bombs. A-bombs, not H-bombs. What the hell do we do for an F-stop on H-bombs? I don't know. Just, you know, wing it. Be thankful it's not an F-bomb. <laughs> <laughs>
Now the date. Saturday, November 1st, 1952. The place is a U.S. Air Force B-47B Stratojet flying 27,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean, 15 miles south of any Weetok Island, where a top secret event is about to take place. So, Dr. Teller, I was running these numbers again, and I found... Please, don't use my name here today, Dr. Robinson. I'm uh, not here. You understand? Uh, apologies, Doctor, but it's just that I found the amount of liquid deuterium that you're using in this device makes it impractical as a deployable weapon. It's not about the science, Dr. Robinson. It's about the statement. The world's first hydrogen bomb. Okay, here we go. Ten, nine. Damn it! What eight, should I be shooting at? Seven, two point eight. Oh five, hell! I'm just going four, to F two. They can fix it in post. Two, one, go, Ivy Mike. Thermonuclear age! Congratulations, Doctor. Uh, are you guys getting all this? Yeah, wow. I think I burned my right eye, but we got it. It's so beautiful. Look at what I made. There's something wrong. R wrong? General Burton reporting that the USS Estes has detected a whirlpool forming at ground zero. A whirlpool? Impossible! Could the detonation have ruptured some kind of undersea fault line? But it was only 10.4 megatons of TNT. The Earth's crust should be miles thick at that point. Unless there was a cavity underneath it. I can see it! Holy crap! That thing's a mile wide! It should only be 175 feet deep. Stop filming! Stop the film now! Diabolical Tales Starring Brian Bedell and Jack Ferguson in an exciting story of dangerous intrigue, fantastic adventure, and sinister circumstance. Incidents in the story you are about to hear are based on the authentic records from the above top secret U.S. government Project Agartha, which is concerned with the deadly and imminent threat of a secret civilization from within the Earth. Now, based on the motion picture by Cosmic Control Productions and featuring the original orchestral score by Troy Sterling Nice, we are proud to present this adaptation of Diabolical Tales, Part 1, Genesis of the Men from Within the Earth. Now, the date. Monday, November 10th, 1952. The place is the United States of America. Just outside of Washington, D.C., two agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation are on a stakeout near a row of high-end apartment buildings. While Agent Thompson sits in the driver's seat, FBI Agent Cooper is our story's protagonist. And he is getting tired of this whole stakeout deal. You know, I'm getting tired of this whole stakeout deal. There's better things to do than be watching Sinatra all the time. Hey, you were the one who told J. Edgar that you saw him with Sam Giancana last week. So what? It was true. Now, because of you, Agent Cooper, we're stuck here following Sinatra because Hoover sure he's in the mob. <laughs> Everyone knows he's just a wannabe. He was with Giancana. I know, but I don't want to give Sinatra a hard time. I like Sinatra. Besides, he's wise to us. Did you see the look he gave us before he went in there? I saw it, Agent Thompson. <sighs> so who's he got in there tonight? Well, who do you think? Ava Gardner, tough guy. I don't think Sinatra and Ava Gardner are a reason for our being here. Well, what did you expect? You just joined the force seven months ago. 
I joined the Bureau to follow in the footsteps of Elliot Ness. He brought down Al Capone, and Giancana took his place. I want to be the one to take down Giancana. It's my civic duty. What was that? Agent Cooper saw what appeared to be a man dressed in black running across the road ahead of them. It's showtime. What is that? It's not Halloween, that's for sure. In my book, he's suspicious. The two FBI agents climbed out of their car and split up. While Agent Thompson ran off in a different direction, Agent Cooper chased the man in the black cape. Just as Agent Cooper was about to catch him, Agent Thompson bent around a corner, cutting them off. Freeze! The man in black vaporized Agent Thompson with a strange weapon. Before Agent Cooper could fire off a round, the man in black spun around, knocked his 38 special standard issue sidearm aside, and raised his weapon to Agent Cooper's head. Darkness washed over Agent Cooper. He dropped to the ground. He was out cold. Some time passed before Agent Cooper opened his eyes again. When he did, he found himself in his office at FBI headquarters. And sitting in a chair across from him was his boss, FBI Assistant Director Smith. Welcome back to the world, Cooper. You had us worried for a little back there. Uh, Assistant Director Smith, what happened? Well, it looks like you had a little roughed up. You need to take it easy for a couple of days. Mr. Hoover's given you the rest of the week off. I rem remember Agent Thompson dying. Yeah, yeah, we've got all that on file now. You want a cup of coffee, Cooper? You know I don't drink coffee, sir. Listen, Cooper, I want you to forget about what you experienced last night. It's not important. We have other agents working on the case, so don't worry about it. My partner's dead, sir. It's my civic duty to get to the bottom of this. No, no. No. Listen, Cooper. You've only been with the Bureau for a few months. And we know you've been following Frank Sinatra around for the last couple of weeks, and, and there's nothing to that. So what we're prepared to do is to give you the rest of the week off. Then we'll book you on a flight to Chicago next Monday, and you can go, you can go trail Sam Giacana. All the same, sir, I'd like to help on this case. The man responsible was dressed all in black. And, and he had this cape that- That's an order, Agent Cooper. You are to forget about this experience altogether. Just drop it. You're not to speak about it to anyone or anybody. Remember, part of your duty as an agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation is to be sworn to secrecy. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You just got that new security clearance. We'd hate to have to downgrade you to SC2. I understand, Assistant Director Smith. Go on. Have a good week off. Agent Cooper is dejected, confused. He couldn't shake the mystery of the man in the black cape. Meanwhile, waiting in their apartment is Agent Cooper's beautiful young wife, Kate. She is handling a shot glass full of triple X vodka while simultaneously ironing the laundry. <sighs> Kate quickly hides her triple X vodka. Honey, I'm home. Oh, hi, Agent Cooper. How was your day? Oh, wait, don't tell me. Because you can't tell me, can you? You're gonna burn my shirt, Kate. Not with this steam iron, I won't. It's the Electric Moonbeam Model Z4 Deluxe Steam Iron from Amalgamated Technologies. The Electric Moonbeam Model Z4 Deluxe is better than the other steam irons. Right, Kate? That's right, Agent Cooper. Because the Moonbeam Model Z4 Deluxe is made of chrome steel and bakelite. I could leave it on your work shirt for another ten seconds and it wouldn't even burn it. It's another great product from Amalgamated Technologies. It's one of the best electric steam irons on the market. It's just like the access. Amalgamated is America. <laughs> 
So, do you want to tell me where you were last night? Agent Thompson got killed last night. I was chasing this man dressed all in black and he... Can't tell you anymore. It's my civic duty. Sworn to secrecy, ears only. Sorry, Kate. Agent Thompson is dead? But how? Now, this man, dressed all in black, shot him with some kind of new wave fancy compass kind of thing, and then he... Can't tell you anymore, hon. Civic duty. Ears only. You understand. Ah, uh, you never tell me anything. I never know what's going on! The doorbell buzzes. Agent Cooper opens his apartment door to see a man in a dark trench coat standing in the hall. Agent Cooper, FBI. Yeah? I'm with the National Security Agency. Have you heard of that? Well, yeah, sure. President Truman formed NSA a few days ago. What can I do to help, mister? You can invite me in, Agent Cooper. I've got a couple of questions to ask you, and you might be able to help me solve a problem. It involves your activities last night with Agent Thompson. What can I do to help, Mr... My name is not important, but you can call me Operative 132. Or O-132. Well, O-132, let's get down to brass tacks. All right. Got any coffee brewing? I don't drink it. it stunts your growth. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Only the best G-men drink the stuff. Keeps your stamina up. Well, I'm I'm sorry. Do you want to sit down, O-132? Sure. Take a seat. Okay, for starters, I know that you encountered a sinister man dressed in black, and he killed Agent Thompson with a weapon of some kind, correct? That's right. You know who he is? Well, he's a... he's a communist. A Russian spy of some kind with a secret weapon of some kind. But what's really disturbing is that he was spotted at the Atomic Energy Commission building just one mile away from your encounter with him. A Russian communist? Stealing our atomic secrets? What I'm going to tell you is above top secret. The news of this won't be broke to the average citizen for at least one year, four months... Two days. The United States of America has detonated a new type of atomic bomb, one even more powerful than the regular A bomb. An H bomb. An H bomb? A hydrogen bomb. It took place on the 1st of November in the Pacific. Soviets probably picked up on it. And now they're trying to steal our hydrogen bomb secrets. I need your help, Agent Cooper. I'm the only operative in the NSA working under a project called Agartha. And you're the only person to encounter this man in black and live to tell about it. Anything to help, O-132. First, we need to track down this man in black. Then we'll head over to the Atomic Energy Commission and see exactly what's been tampered with. It's a measure of national defense. Upon hearing those words, Agent Cooper is inspired to action. But meanwhile, miles away from Washington, D.C., in a secret underground lair, the mysterious man with the black cape toiled away at a computer console displaying illuminated, hovering screens. He activated a strange device that displayed a towering three-dimensional image of a giant head. It was his leader. It was... Master Zun, by your command, I have stolen the plans to the hydrogen bomb. The surface dwellers will pay. Good work, Saul. We will have our revenge on the surface dwellers for their destructive meddling. Yes, Master. Plan Zero is now underway. Tonight, I will steal the plutonium and the uranium, and by tomorrow afternoon, I will have a fully functioning hydrogen bomb. Excellent. You are to take the bomb to Washington, D.C., and detonate it at the home of their insignificant president. Yes, and when the 
dust clears, the American surface dwellers will think that the Russian surface dwellers have done this. In the war that ensues, they will destroy each other. This surface dwellers technology has finally grown to be a threat to our soul. Make our race proud. May the plan be a success. Song bowed and saluted his master. Success, Master Sun. Song then wandered over to his console and focused his attention on a pen. He raised his hand and stared at it intently. Very intently. This sinister man from within the earth is attempting to move the pen with some kind of telekinesis, you see. But the problem is that he actually does not have any mind powers to speak of. So he finally gave it up. Despite this, Song proclaims to no one in particular. And should any surface dweller dare to get in my way, I will vanquish them with the powers of my mind. Will the sinister Song emerge victorious with his evil plan against the United States of America? Will our heroes, Agent Cooper and Operative 132, prevail against this insidious threat? Find out next time on the second part of our adaptation of Diabolical Tales, Genesis of the Men from Within the Earth. This special episode of the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour starred Brian Bedell, Kat Peterson, Brian Van Kay, Ken Wester, Kyle Stroud, Paul Warner, Dan Jeremy Brooks, Steve DeMonico, Brian Thornley, Christian Wheeler, Stuart Moyer, Don Guerin, Brandon Kane, and Jack Ferguson as Operative 132. The original score was by Troy Sterling Neese, the mix was by Dan Jeremy Brooks of Apocalypse Cow Studios, and the original sound design was by Jim Reeder of Sweet Audio Sound Design. Based on the motion picture by Cosmic Control Productions, it was written by Brandon Kane and produced by Christian Wheeler, Troy Sterling Neese, Don Guerin, and Dan Jeremy Brooks. The Diabolical Tales Radio Hour is presented by Cosmic Control Productions. I'm Brandon Kane, the writer and director of the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour. While our show is a lot of fun to create, each episode costs a lot of time and money to produce. So if you liked what you heard, please subscribe to the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour on your preferred medium in order to catch new episodes as they're released. And if you have the means, please consider donating to our show at patreon.com slash diabolicaltales. Patrons will help us continue to produce the show, and will also give you access to bonus materials and additional content. You can also find us at diabolicaltales.com, and thank you for listening to the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour. Thank <laughs> you.